Have you been injured? Hello! Hello! I'm attorney Howie Feldstein. Have you been injured due to someone else's negligence? Hurt in a car? At the work site? At your little, at your, at your kid's little league game? If you're injured by a fall, by a foul ball, if you're injured at all, give Feldstein a call! 1-800-555-FALL. If you're wondering what that was, Hello? that was a video. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Sean Patrick Green. I am the executive producer of the Great Lakes Christian Film Festival that has been going on since 2015. And I have since then finished five festivals i don't really say that i'm an expert on anything all i can say is that i have some insight as to what's going on at this point now i'll get into myself maybe a little bit later i do want to have some people on the call or on the uh, video with me video chat but I put the blast out on the Great Lakes Christian Film Festival website. And I also have put it on a new page that I've created. That's called Christian Filmmaking with Sean Patrick Green. Hi. So we have all kinds of options here. Hi. Yes, my daughter Mariah is with me. Hi. She's pointing to her... Movies that she's watching, and it's called It's India. All right, so she's watching movies from India. Anyways, the mug that you see on the screen right now for those who are watching live, and anybody who might be reviewing this later, the guy's mug, his name is. Carl Miles, and I will explain why I have him and his video on the screen in one second. But in the meantime, listen to this. If you can't hear the audio, I will figure that out later, but check this out. Hello, I'm attorney Howie Feldstein. Have you been injured due to someone else's negligence? Hurt in a car? At the work site? At your little, at your, at your kids' little league game. If you're injured by a fall, by a foul ball, if you're injured at all, give Feldstein a call. One eight hundred five 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 fall. All right, so there is my buddy Carl Miles, ladies and gentlemen. That is a gentleman. <laughs> that I worked with. Hello, Sean Patrick Green. This is my inaugural uh, podcasting. I am working on producing quality podcasts like Isaac Hernandez has, and we will get to that point in a minute. I don't know how long that minute's going to be, but just stay tuned. I got glass glare, so that doesn't help, but I'm going to do my best to not be showing glass glare and i'm staring at this webcam on this laptop of mine so i'd have other equipment but i just don't have anything set up and i have a lot going on and i'll get to that in a little bit but first of all i just want to thank you guys for all the people that have submitted films all the people who has um been a part of the great lakes christian film festival over the years and for people who not only um, believed in our organization over the years, but also, you know, for the, uh, not only the organization, but all the films that were submitted over the years, too. <laughs> all the people that have just, had, you know, shared their talent, not only with myself and our team, but also with the other filmmakers 
actors, actresses, uh, writers, anybody that's blessed our uh, event with their presence. Um, just really grateful, India. Really grateful that we have participants, people that are enjoying it, you know, and people that see value in what we're doing. Um, I'm trying to see what's okay. I got Yardstream is our platform right now, just so everybody knows. And that's not an advertisement ploy for them, but that's the platform we're using for this podcast. And I do want to emphasize that this particular show or segment is about Christian films. And however um, you feel about this format or this kind of content, um, I'll leave that up to you to decide how you want to react to this. But the point of this series of uh, shows that I will be producing over the next couple years, hopefully, but certainly in the next couple months, is to make sure that there's a good overview and perspective on what a Christian film is, uh, not necessarily what a Christian film isn't, but what a Christian film kind of is, and what to expect out of people who make Christian film. Does that make sense? Is that, is that okay? Now, I know it's a little dark, and I'm going to try to change all that in the future. But right now, this is the pilot prod podcast. It's going to be recorded audio and video. So we'll have uh, an audio version of it for people who are audio book types. Um. But just um, keep in mind that, you know, we, we're looking for quality guests, content, and things to review. Uh, it's November 16th, 2019. We're almost finished with this year. And uh, kind of recap a little bit. Great Lakes Christian Film Festival 2019 was a great event. Um, as a matter of fact, uh we had, I, I think I overdid it. We had more awards that were offered to be winning than I could keep up with. So some people did not get their awards in their mail yet. And a lot has happened as a result of that event till now. Now, for those that don't know, um, I had a, uh, return to finish a college degree. I'm getting my bachelor's in media studies. The concentration is film concentration, film production, as opposed to film theory or film critiquing. Um, so film production. And then minoring in theater because they do require at University of Buffalo to do a minor. So I've chose uh, theater to be my minor, which uh, coincides with what I've been doing over the last couple of years. I've been doing, um, I've been doing a lot of film as an actor. I've done a few stage productions as an actor. But what I'm learning more valuable, value, try to word it right so I'm not stuttering. What I am learning with that gives me greater value is the production side of things on both the film and theater. So I'm learning not only better quality ways to do production of film, but I'm also learning set design and lighting design and um, uh, sound design uh, for the theater aspect of things. So that's really a bonus for me. So to me, I'm getting a big overview of the whole media and arts world with UB. And, I, and and it's not that I'm ignorant of any of it. It's just that I don't have some things, some skills, some, uh, um, you know, some things that I'm interested in. Um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Learning, just just having a better skill set. That's all. So I, I want to hone in those skills, get you know, increase and better myself and my craft, and um, and so on and so forth. So being a film critique artist as well is 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 very important. So that is one aspect, film theory that they they try to put. Um, you know, in the class curriculum. So film production, film theory, and theater design, tech theater. Uh, I did join a union locally for theater tech. IATSA 10, Buffalo, local 10, Buffalo, New York. So I'm part of that, that system now. Uh, the I the US ITT national group I joined part of that a membership with that and also the local schools version. So um, I do have um, like I said experience doing film. Most of my experience came from radio, uh, working more like you know um, radio production radio board operating so to speak i did radio personalities so on and so forth so i've done a lot of radio stuff so that's still an interest i'll always have um um so so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to recap a little bit about this week what happened in my world i have just completed submission a couple days ago um, for the, the Four Points film project. And I'll go to that in a second. But what I want to do is like, I want to bring a major announcement to anybody who has not tuned in to the... Um, to the so I, hang on one second. Okay, um, so I want to bring up to speed some people who don't know. One of our winners from last year, 2018, GLC FF 2018, won the best special effects, and he was third place in feature films, was The Red Resurrection. Now, a lot of people that do Christian films or do film festivals or whatever, probably wouldn't have thought that this would fit in a Christian film setting. But there's an undertone in it. It's not blatant Christianity like some, um, you know, more mainstream popular films, something that maybe a TBN would broadcast. But it's... Um, it's, it's, it's a certain... It's like it's a new new format for maybe the Christian world. I mean, I've seen a few people do like a Christian horror, suspense, thriller, that kind of thing. But this is one of the first ones I've seen that they've done justice and they're doing very well with is the zombies. Zombies are a big thing. Here in Western New York, we have uh, the big film industry has been blowing up. And locally, we have a lot of people from Western New York uh, getting work and acting and crew and uh, all kinds of different elements because of the um, the industry's uh, interest in not only filming in New York State, but specifically on our side of the state in Western New York because it's so much cheaper than New York City to film. It's more space. There's more... Um, you know, smaller towns and a lot of other things we can offer that, that the city doesn't offer. Again, it's cheaper. It's cheaper than Westchester County or, you know, maybe Orange County. So a lot of productions are coming up here and we're excited about that. But there's this, uh, you know, slasher films, if you want to call them that, are kind of like popular and horror flicks and all that. As a lot of people probably have it, zombies, you know, that type of thing. 
and faith-based films really doesn't have a big, huge market here. Uh, yeah, even though in Toronto, Cloud 10 Pictures was had a big presence. Um, for some reason, Western New York is just not that that market yet. And this is one of my purposes for doing this film festival here is maybe inspire some people to do some faith-based films around here, either local or from outside the area. So anyways, here's a film about basically zombies. And I got the trailer. I just want to show you. Uh, really excited about it. And Matt Long um, from Kentucky just got their distribution deal and, and finally was able to uh, announce it this past week. Uh, November 12th is when it was released. But the movie's called The Red Resurrection. And I believe I got sound here. I'm going to play the trailer. And hopefully the sound works. So just please forgive me if it doesn't. What am I? If I was that thin, then how am I me again? You want to hurry up there, Doc? We injected you with an antitoxin, and that killed the plague, and it made... You, you, again. Son, if you thought there was evil in the world before the plague, you've not seen what scared, starving men will do to stay alive. I'm real glad I didn't kill you back in the woods. Oh, this is a whole lot more fun. Trial and judgment await those who pursue deception. Order! There must be order! I can't promise that it won't be dangerous, because we don't live in that kind of world anymore. We can't leave those things are out there. There's guys shooting at us out there. I can't. I can't go out there. We didn't bring you back just to see you die. Yeah. We brought you back so you could live. Death. Life. Resurrection. And there it is. So that's the the release. Oh, Sonic the Hedgehog. This is not our. Sorry, Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, so let me just put that. Let's see if I can find that. There it is. Red Resurrection. So there you go. Anybody want to see something unique, a very different way of filmmaking? Um. Cool. I mean, I, I like to see more unique ways to spread the gospel and tell the story of the Bible in a different way that hasn't been told before. You know, um, some people might be a little bit standoffish about it or skeptical or even downright just flat out don't think that it's a, a viable way of telling the story. Just keep in mind, um, the only argument I can really make for it is that Christ spoke a lot of parables. And a lot of it was indirectly told to people outside of the realm of the spiritual, if you will. Um, a lot of people are, were carnal-minded that he spoke to. They were not spiritually minded. They didn't have the Holy Ghost or the knowledge of God. You know, Jehovah for some people. Um, so Christ spoke very differently to some people. He spoke in parables. And, you know, some people question Christ and how, you know, Jesus, why would you talk like that? And he just says, listen, to them people, I'll talk like this. But to you, I'll tell you straight out. This is how I think. This is how I feel. This is what you should obey you know the statutes and all that stuff so christ was a little bit different when he spoke to his disciples and especially his inner circle and maybe the, even more in depth and direct with his top three or closest three uh disciples um but nevertheless he had he did tell stories differently to some people outside of his discipleship so that he can explain 
Um, not necessarily double talk or talk around them, but that's kind of how he did it. So that's kind of how I feel about this. And that's why I felt this was a good, unique way of telling the story. And if I'm not mistaken, we have details on that on his website. Now, I'll, I'll refer you to him on that. But um, we'll go to my page here that we've created. But um, we've nominated him. They won Best uh, Special Effects for a narrative feature last year. We also gave him a nomination for Best Narrative Feature, which he was basically in third place. Uh, best Producer of a Narrative Feature, Matt Long. Best Actor in a Narrative Feature, David um, Harper, who was... Let's see if I can find him in this. David Harper, where are you? Where is he? I think it's over here. Everything's kind of a dark tail right here. That's David Harper. So gave him a nomination. And then best supporting cast. So the whole cast in general, we felt were, um, that's not where I'm going to. We felt were really uh, solid. So here's the page we got now. We just loaded that up the other day just so you guys have more un uh, details about this film and where you can get a hold of the film to watch the trailer again. Uh, website, so on and so forth. So they were one of the winners. Uh, IMDb page, it's always a good thing to have. And I would suggest anybody else that submits films to us over in the next, in, this, in the coming years, and if you can, go back to your Film Freeway pages, always include your IMDb page because that's a link that gives you value on their platform, especially with... Um, Excuse me, uh, especially with other f industry people that look at uh, stuff like that. You know, their IMDb is very important. Go to their page real quick. You kind of see their credits, their IMDb page. All right. There it is. Of course, we're not advertising Charlie's Angels, but it's on their page production company is paying money so they get that little spot so all right so uh it's kind of, the, of a recap now resurrected from a living death a fearful and fractured young woman must overcome not only the memories of what she was but what the monsters and men created by a deadly plague so that's the storyline matt long director writer stars are in there once again and uh again they're released on dvd and on demand all over so i believe it's on amazon already and um mm -hmm. just go check it out you know what i mean okay so there's all your actors. Matt Long looks like he's got a pro. I just updated my pro, by the way. <laughs> Again. So if you can, check him out. Matt Long. He even played in, st he starred in it in his own film. Thought that was kind of neat. A little cameo for himself. Build his IMDb. Let's see what else he's done. Well, we got the second here. There he is. Matt Long. Known for Res Resurrection. Looks like that's uh, the only project that he's up there for as a director. As an actor. Not bad for a debut, huh? 2017 is when it was released. So he did a little bit of everything. Producer, editor, cinematographer, writer, actor, director. Good job. Matt Long. I, was, I actually asked if he could be on this call this program and he was not available so um not a problem uh, unfortunately we didn't have him on but you know i figured while well, we had a chance we can get him on for a couple seconds and it didn't work out so just remember go on to glcff.com you can always go to films and 
if I haven't already, I'm going to create a link. But all these films should be listed per year, if I'm not mistaken. Here's like the link for each year's submissions. And if you go to GLCFF18, you'll see here's a list of all the films that were in that year. So, and uh, there's only a few pages, few of them from last year that I put on there. So, as you can see, a lot goes into to going into these type of uh, events that people create. A lot of people um, are requesting some of their awards and stuff that they won. Um, and I really apologize for it. Literally, since since the festival ended, it was a no it's been nonstop for me. You know, so getting a couple days to, to sit down for a second usually ends up me sleeping because I'm so busy. The first thing is, as soon as our festival was done, we made preparations for the, for the Buffalo's 48-hour film project, which um, if I don't have that up there yet, I will. But this is the four points. But the 48-hour film project is international, you know, for, I think, 140 different uh, 140 different teams or cities around the world. Filmopalooza is going to be in Netherlands in March. Cannes Film Festival is a part of it as well. They We uh, tied in, this organization tied into it. So, um. Yeah, a little commercial for them. But literally every weekend after GLCFF is the Buffalo's 48-hour film project. So that's what I jumped to right away. Um, you know, and, and long story short, after that, I was in Georgia for two weeks. Um, nonstop. It's family vacation. Spending time in Georgia and Florida. And literally, the day I came back, I'm already going to classes for school at UB. And again, this is my second year back. So, so once that's done, hopefully we, you know, I'm back to just focusing on this. But you never know. I mean, everybody else that knows being a creative or being in the industry of any kind like this, you're always busy doing something. You're never, never without something to do. So... Here we go. We got school. Um, and then last weekend, I did the four points. That's what I was showing you here. The four points film project, which is tied in with the 48-hour film project. So this year, let's see, proof right there. Here's the weekend, November 8th through the 11th. It's the one we attended so that we, I, I put in the fee. I created the team. Um, and they all came out of nowhere. I mean, it was great. I had no team initially. I thought I was going to do it all by myself with maybe one or two people helping as actors or whatever. A couple people said they would like to do it, but they can't. So all of a sudden other people that I'd never worked with before showed up and I was blessed, man. All I was going to say is that we had a great time. Um, Yeah, I mean, I even got the, um, on our IMDB, got to find mine, I think. Give me a second here. Where do I have it? Uh, four points that I put it up here. After all is the name of our, yep. All right, so I'll put it up here first. This is the actual page I created for my Buffalo 48-hour film team. I call it a team. We call it too much bowl. That was the name of our team. And the film we called after all. All right. So the tagline is a small group of people learn to cope with PTSD. Simple, right? Doesn't give anything away. All right. Little introduction. All right. The team, what we're doing it for and so on and so forth. And a little description of how we put the team together. 
a little still shot of Paula that opened it up for us. Slate. And here were the film requirements for our team. It's actually for the um, for the whole uh, East time zone in the United States, with the exception of the genre. Each team had their own genres for our time zone, but the rest of these elements were every team in our time zone. So our film requirements, we were given action, adventure, or period piece. So we kind of chose a little bit of both. Hopefully that uh, por is portrayed in the film. The character we chose, we gave Lorena Hamill, who was a nurse. The line was, what's that noise or what is that noise? So I believe what's that noise was in it. And then the prop, we, it was a lint roller. All right. Team members. Myself as a producer, director, editor. And again, it's the first time putting together a real solid team without me having to do any other crew work. And that alleviated me or relieved me so that I can focus on these elements here up top. Producer, director, editor. Producer meaning spending money. Also paperwork. Director meaning working with all the actors and making sure lines and facial features or whatever, you know, kind of it's glued together, right? And an editor, as in post-production after all the elements were done, put it all together. Director of photography was a phenomenal guy, Ben Chatfield out of Rochester. Sound recordist, another awesome talent, Derek Edrington II, I hear in Buffalo. His father came out in in uh, with lights and did some behind the behind the scenes camera work. Uh, Amanda Hill came down with Benjamin or Ben from Rochester to help out production assistant and another local gentleman, Alan Warren, who I've worked with a couple times on other things. Actually, just one time or something. This is the second time I've worked with him, and he actually was, did awesome. He did most of the slate, plus he acted in it. Uh, we had some writers. What we did is just kind of do Google Docs, and we just opened it up, and we just started collaborating on a, on a script Friday night when we got our elements. Uh, that was the 8th. And then Saturday morning, we woke up, looked at the script. All right, this is what we're doing. And we were rolling. So I had a schedule. I had all these different um, places set up. And a couple of them were just like last minute setups. And it worked out good. These are cast. And I have to say, these guys were awesome. Especially this guy down here. I'm just kidding. Michael uh, uh, Siesla, I think that's how you pronounce it, was awesome. And I, I, I'm not going to sh share with you too much about what we did, but he did a monologue to me that was outstanding, and I was really happy with him. And he's, he's a, a seasoned actor, SAG eligible. Good thing is nobody here was SAG, but we had Michaels um, and Patsy Silver, Krista Finelli are both SAG eligible actors. And... Um, I'm still there. I'm almost there. I'm getting there. So these are people that made it happen. And our filming locations was the Dog Ears Bookstores in South Buffalo, Fire uh, Buffalo Fire Station over in Larkinville, part uh, district in Buffalo, and then Swan Street Diner right across the street from that fire station. Plus, it was at my house, and I didn't put my address on there for a reason. Um, and in the beginning of this podcast, we showed Howie Feldstein. How you like that? He was pretty funny. And we got the links to all of our things here. So I think I put the IMDB for myself here. All right? There's my cell phone. That's my business cell phone. So that's okay if everybody calls it. Most of the time, I'm going to have it off. And I'll go to the messages later. So... Here I am. I finally updated it again, got my IMDb Pro back status back up, and I'm almost at 
219,000. Okay. Getting close. So at least it's on a rise. It's not on a downfall. Um, one of the things I was just in as a featured extra was Coldbrook, which is uh, William Fickner and Kim Coates. Um, there's after all this, our, our little picture of our still picture of like the behind the scenes. Mr. Imagination was another 48 hour film project. The first one I actually attended in 2017 message in a bottle is another 2017 release. So I was filmed, I think in 2015 or 2013. I can't remember. So, but here's a list of stuff that I've done and I'm still working on making, making it a bigger impact, but this would have been good if this guy decides to release this film and let us know about it and actually pay me for it, which he didn't. He gave me a bounce check, so he still owes me money. I'm a little upset with that one, but um, I still haven't heard of a release of it and nothing. No, None of us have here in western New York. It was filmed up in Niagara Falls and parts of Buffalo, and... Uh, the guy that produced it from Alberta, Canada, has yet to get us in the loop here. So I don't know what's going on. Had some pretty cool people in it. Bill Brown, good local actor, Scottman, and a couple other local actors, actresses that got involved. So let's just see what the release date is. Not that this is Christian filmmaking, but these are the projects that are allowed lauded to me here in western new york that's kind of the point um you know starting off doing film here in buffalo that was what i've noticed is that there's really nothing going on here that's that can be even close to being christian um except for a couple of them um let's see of course white irish drinkers was my first big um film independent film but first big uh background actor contribution so that was a big deal for me but um let's see a couple independents that i've created a couple other independents locally uh fiance killer now that was the first one that actually became a release on the a lifetime, and I was uncredited in that, but I'm in that one. Um, so you barely see me, but I, I had a couple snapshots of that. I got first purge, you never seen me. I was basically in a muck and mire of smoke and everything, you can never see anything. I had a mask on, or not a mask, but, but I was like tucked behind a pickup. So, but hey, I got paid. And this one is a local one that's on its way, hopefully, to, to be released. This was the 48-hour film project I did with some Christians locally here in Buffalo. And then Coldbrook was the Kim Coates and William Fichtner movie that was filmed last year. Uh, two years ago, I'm sorry, and then released last year. While we were waiting was my own film that I did as a background actor. While we were in a background holding area, I just made a little sh a funny short. Pastor Greg's reboot. Now, um, it's sort of a faith-based film. Um, but it's not quite focused on faith-based as much. Definitely not. Stage Killer was another good little shot I got at at a local. Uh, it's, uh, this actually got on Netflix. So if you ever look at Stage Killer, you'll see image of me inside uh, like a television um, television control board. You get a nice little shot of me there. Another short for Buffalo Forty Eight, and then here's our short for the Four Points Film Project that we did. All right, so that was uh, in a nutshell, Buffalo Forty Eight film four points. So that's kind of what I did. 
it's been doing. I mean, just trying to stay busy, really. And uh, I'm really excited that uh, we have these kinds of opportunities to um, at least work with local people that are in film and people that are from the outside coming in, trying to be, you know, background actor, whatever we can locally get into. But I really, really want to do a faith-based film here in Western New York. And I have to... I mean, I'm not, I can't rely on anybody else, it seems, to want to do this. People are telling me, hey, if you come up with $2 million, uh, I'll come out there and shoot a film for you. I'm like, listen, if I had $2 million, I'll shoot a film. As a matter of fact, if I had $2 million, I'd probably shoot 10 films. You know what I mean? At $200,000 budgets. And then I start my own streaming company and ever, so on and so forth. So, but yes, I mean, I'm going to do everything I can to try to produce something. But ultimately, people who are masters at the game, I would like to have them here because it brings credibility. Um, it also brings people's um, money <laughs> to see the movie. So, uh, So that's what I'm working on. In the meantime, I'm in school, getting my bachelor's, getting my, um, you know, my ex expertise up, my my skill sets up, um, you know, doing my part to try to make make things happen. You know what I mean? Uh, at least for my region. We also, I'm excited that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that we have these people coming from the outside in, and I would like to bring them in somehow, you know, fundraise for even the independents to come out and maybe to come out and make some films seen locally. Uh, we got a lot of talented people in this area, so I don't want to let that talent go to waste, and I definitely want to see, like I said, more faith-based ideas come to this table here in Western New York. So if you got an idea... I'm looking for you. Come on out. I mean, I got a house. <laughs> I mean, I got a couch to surf on. If if it, the worst case scenario for crew or actors or whatever, we can figure all that out. So I want to do that. I'm going to keep working on at least trying to do it on my own. I do want to mention, though, okay, for all those other people that know about the 48-hour film project, and for the people who do not know about it, it's a great competition to be involved in. It's basically like having, it's like boot camp for filmmaking. It forces you to do something within that 48 hours. And the four points was 77 hours total. But it forces you to do something. And it and it's, it's ideal for people who are just sitting on a fence like, oh, I wish I could do this, blah, blah, blah. The 48 hour film project is great for that. And you don't necessarily have to write, write films that are faith based all the time. But if that's all you want to do, that's fine. Get it into the 48 hour. It's a good opportunity for, um, hey, if anything, it'll bring your message out to an audience that may not necessarily ever hear a message about Christ or. Or anything to that effect. But. Um, and I, I, I don't like to keep. Everything. So tight knit. That we don't allow anything else. Uh, you know. Ideas and stuff from outside. You know. We can kind of get into a Christian bubble. When it comes to. Our product. And I come from a background. Of the music industry. And I've seen the promotion of music um as a radio promoter and 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 a radio per, per kind of like a little bit of everything i did i did announcing i did um programming i did all kinds of different radio stuff so from that background music promotion to radio as well sometimes christian 
stuff can get into the Christian bubble and forget about that there's other people out there that have never heard of what they're doing. And they don't know how to communicate to them, to non-people, non-Christian people, about their message. It's great to inspire and, and inspire and, and encourage the church, but it's also good to know how to speak the language of the people outside the church. So sometimes Christian films can get that way. I'm noticing that. Like I said, I've been reviewing films for well, six years now. And it's it's there's a lot of the same ideas as the music side of things is that you'll get in this bubble of I'm speaking to the church. And like I said in the early watch the beginning of this, the Red Resurrection is a gr great example of not being in that bubble. So um, just leave it at that. But. If you are in the bubble and you like to stay in a bubble, that's okay too. Because the church needs encouragement. The church needs inspiration. The church needs to be uplifted, encouraged, um, exhorted. There's all kinds of purposes for being uh, in reaching too with your product. I do have a suggestion. If the 48-hour film project is not something you want to get into, which is, I still highly suggest it, then there's also a Christian version of it. And I believe this has been around for a while, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think one of them was, the, one of the things I, I want to say it was 2008, 2009, the very latest 2000, yeah, 2009, I think I seen it first time. They had this competition to do a, a short film that was about cereal. Now, many of you that might have entered it might remember that. It was new to me. I didn't. Under, I didn't realize there was Christian film festivals like that. You know, where you do you can do a small competition. I didn't have the materials. I didn't enter. I, I've I've been sitting on the fence because I didn't really think that I can do any of this. Going back to college, going to the university, learning this stuff. Now, I feel like I can do this stuff. No problem. That, maybe not no problem, but there's always problems. But I want to bring up one of my rivals. It's not even a good word for it. Another Christian film festival that has been around a lot longer than mine. The Christian Worldview Film Festival. They have their competition, 2020 CWVFF 48-hour film race, they call it. That's what they're doing. So Christian Worldview Film Festival, 48-hour film race. Here you go, guys. They are doing it. I guess they've been on a break, but they're relaunching it. They already opened up the window as of November 11th. 2019. Uh, actually, the deadline was the first early bird one was the November 11th. So November, December 9th is the next deadline to register your team. And uh, it starts January 3rd. So if you're interested in being a part of this, I suggest you guys jump in. I'm also going to put this out there. And um, after doing three 48-hour film projects and one uh, online version of it, so four total, I am prepared to start one also for Great Lakes Christian Film Festival. It might not be this year, might be next year, but I'm prepared to start one as well. So just keep that in mind. We're going to start that possibly for 2021. I don't want to get overwhelming with this, but this is going to be, this is a great thing. Let me see if I can play this real quick, and I don't know if the audio will play, but it's a three-minute uh, trailer, it looks like.
Oh, hello there, fellow filmmakers. I'm on a personal quest to find the best 48 hour short films. That's right, we're back and better than ever. That's right, the CWVFF 48 hour film race returns on Friday, January the 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this year it's a flat rate for all teams. So whether you have five people or 50, everyone pays the same amount. Well, don't leave us hanging. How much is it? When is it? Who is it for? It's for all filmmakers, new or experienced. Early registration is just $100 per team, and it opens today, running through November the 11th. Regular registration is $150. It starts November 12th and ends December 9th. Late registration is $200 per team, and it runs from December the 10th through December the 30th. Wow. How does everyone know what's going on except me? Was there like an email I missed or something? We even have a sponsor this year. Who? We have partnered with Motion University, who has something they would like to say. Hey everyone, we're super excited to be partnering with the Christian Worldview Film Festival and the 40 Hour Film Race for something very special. At Motion University, we're passionate about giving people the tools, knowledge, and resources to build a sustainable career in film. The Film Race is a great opportunity to hone your filmmaking skills and learn how to work with the deadline. As part of the Film Race this year, all teams who sign up will be receiving exclusive film training content from Motion University to help you make the best 48 hour film you possibly can. This will include some of our favorite tips and tricks, as well as free filmmaking resources, all geared towards your level of expertise. And this year, the rewards are even better. The grand prize has been increased to $1,000, including $500 towards any of our online training courses and $500 cash. On top of that, there'll also be a second place prize this year, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Hope to see you in the competition. Thanks, Andrew and Hannah. Yeah, we are so excited about this partnership with Motion University as it benefits everyone. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Benefits everyone sounds like code for benefits the event. By partnering with Motion University, we are able to give the winner the best remote film career training out there. If you're serious about taking your filmmaking to the next level, Motion University is a great next step. Wow. Well, if only I had listened first, I would have learned that it actually means awesome benefit with no downside. Well, with this in mind, I need to know, where do I sign up and how do I read all of these details in one easy to access place? I'm glad you asked. Just go to www.cwvff.com 48 to see all the details. Everything you need to know is right there. Awesome. Well, we will see you again January 3rd to tell you the three mystery requirements for your film. We'll see you all then. Bye. So there you have it, folks. Looks like uh, that's going to be a fantastic event. And I'm really, Motion University, never heard of them. But I'm really glad that um, I'm glad that these guys are doing that. Really excited about it. Uh, so who knows? Because I'm off the semester in January, I might even might even do this one too. Why not? You know, if I got the idea, if I got the skills, if I got the team, then I'm gonna do it. So their elements a little different than the forty eights. See if I can get to their page. Um, okay, contact. Get back to this other page. There it is. So this one, give me a second. Finish up. I'm going to finish up this podcast with this. Um, this one I talk about is a little bit. The goals. Okay, it's already on their website. ChristianWorldviewFilmFestival.com. 48-hour film race rules. Um, I might even put a link in there for you. So the goals, the teams, uh, registration, what we're allowed to do beforehand, India, what we're allowed to do beforehand, select the crew, the cast, brainstorm, plan shooting days, scouting locations, creating um, some assets like sound effects, music works. You know, if anybody can't see it. Sound effects, music works. Pre-keyed visual elements, effects elements, motion graphics, templates, logos. So you can, you are allowed to do that before this festival. What you're not allowed to do is write a script or shoot footage. That's it. Well, that's not that's not too bad. It actually seems like it's a little bit better than 48 already. Uh, during the race, though, all right, uh, there's going to be a live stream. At the end of it, they'll give the out the elements. So apparently, 
everybody's going to do the same elements. Um, three requirements. Um, and here's some ideas. Three elements are the theme verse. In other words, probably something based on um, John 3.16, for instance. Uh, the film's credit in the film's credits. Each film must include the text based upon the film's, okay, the theme verse reference. So they're going to give out the theme verse. Let's say they say, oh, John 3.16 is the verse. So we got to put that in the film credits. No goal. The goal is, is not just to mention the scripture, but to make each story fully centered around the truth of God's word. All right. And then the mystery making elements, you know, type of shot techniques. Huh. So there's a restriction. That's cool. That's kind of a neat thing. One specific element of filmmaking will either be required or prohibited. Now, prohibited will be an interesting challenge. That's interesting. I like that idea. Because you really got to think about where you're shooting, who you're shooting, so on and so forth. Mystery story requirement or restriction as well. Hmm. Wow. So this is going to be fun. Technical requirements. Three to seven minutes. Um, all films will be within a five-second slate. Okay. It'll have certain elements in the title. And it will be screened at their festival. So, there you go. Christian Filmmaking with Sean Patrick Green. So, go for it. Anybody who's interested in being a part of the Christian Worldview 2020 48-hour film race, jump on. Jump on. I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to jump on it. So, um, hope to see you guys doing all that too. So uh, this has almost been an hour and nobody's chimed in. I'm not sure what's going on Saturday nights. I don't know what Christians do on Saturday nights. Uh, maybe they're just preparing their sermons for tomorrow. I have no idea. But um, I'm not a pastor. So I'm assuming Bible teachers and so on and so forth. I've had my share of, of preparing the day before, so I understand. Um, I'm in the worship band, but I'm a drummer, so all I got to learn, remember, is my beat and some of the, you know, arrangements, so to speak. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. This is my very first show, um, and it's kind of like our pilot show. This is the concept. This is the idea. This is what we're going to be doing. The set's going to be different behind me. The lighting's going to be different. The content is going to be different. The whole idea is to have an update, um, at the very least, on a monthly basis. But I'm going to try to do a couple episodes um, in a month's time, uh, just based on people's availability. So Matt Long couldn't share with us about his film he was a long day today so um hopefully we'll get him on next time but we're gonna get you guys on this show so i want to know more about what you guys are up to what you like to talk about and talk about some of our winners from the past couple years Is that cool awesome remember glcff.com we're gonna go once again next august 2020 for the great lakes christian film festival so you can submit right there at the website. I'm Sean Patrick Green, and this is Christian Filmmaking with Sean Patrick Green. Keep it locked.